plugs Joe Bitney's doing, by the way. Uh, did you know that the, stim the, the first stimulus didn't work? Now he's wants to put now he wants to put another not one point nine trillion dollars again for the middle class because the middle class got didn't get uh, they got thrown on the bus so he wants to do a bit a lot for the middle class now. I, I guess I just wonder where they got the printing presses running pretty hard, don't they? They actually be able to print that much money. I, I have no idea. You know, it's crazy where the where. I don't know where the Democrats think the money's coming from. Uh, oh, I uh, think it's coming. Oh, I mean, we're on upswing. I can tell where the. I mean, um, I, I know exactly where their mentality is. They think that m money falls from a tree. Well, you know, it doesn't. I can assure them that. It, uh, you know, and the only way, uh, <laughs> the only way they seem to ever think they're going to pay for something is to tax the rich. Right. Well, the rich. The rich would probably give them a hundred percent of their money, and they still wouldn't have. If you give all the people in this country that they term as rich, right. I bet they couldn't muster up that. You know, now it'd have to be three trillion or four trillion dollars. Right. I, I, I just don't know where they think it's going to come from. Yeah, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. I believe in God. God's going to take care of us in many ways, but He's not printing money. I can assure you that. Nope. And you know. I, I, I just, it's just beyond me. And I, I get tired of even thinking about it or talking about it. But, you know, uh, it, it, you know we're going to start reparations, you know, talk again, and there we go. It's crazy. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's upside it's down, is what it is. The Democrats want to say uh, Trump was crazy. Well, I can tell you he's crazy, and it's pretty obvious. Is that these Democrats have lost their freaking minds if they ever had one. But, uh, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, <laughs> I just can't even imagine. I, I, um, things like that uh, are beyond me. If he and, only uh, had a brain, remember that? The Wizard of the Boss, if I only had a brain. Yeah. If I only had a brain. Do, 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 do. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know. It's sad that uh, the people out there just, uh, it, it makes you wonder. If somebody out there could explain to me how the Democrats are going to come up with this much cash, and, you know, it's like the candy store, you know, they're going to hand candy out to everybody at the candy store. <laughs> You know, I pay taxes every year, and I pay quite a bit of tax, and mm. uh, and I don't like it, you know. But I do my, well, I guess you could say I do my fair share. Uh, but what, <laughs> to me, if everyone paid their fair share, it'd be a flat percentage. Right. Everybody pays ten percent, and I'm talking about everybody. If you yeah. earn ten dollars, you pay a dollar. If you earn a hundred dollars, you pay ten dollars. If you earn a million dollars, you you know, and so on and so forth. Right. It, whatever ten percent is, but even at that, a person that makes millions of dollars per year, there should be a tax break for them. Yes, because it doesn't take any more road for them to drive their car down the street. Right, and if they are, they're paying fuel taxes. You know, and they paid tax for the. The automobile they bought, and so I, I think that gee, I think it ought to be capped instead of uh, the rich paying more. The rich ought to pay up to this point, and then there's no way they can use that much services. You know, they don't get any more military or any more fire department than I do. Right? They don't so realize why, why. Why do they have to pay more than the person that makes? Less money. It doesn't make any. It makes no sense. Fair share. I say, okay, everybody takes ten percent up to a hundred thousand dollars, and right. then after a hundred thousand dollars, you're capped out. You know, uh, <laughs> there's other taxes that are written that way. Why is an income tax written that way? Right. There's also, no way anybody uh, should pay that much money. Right. I agree. And again, again, I mean, if it's a use. We have use taxes, so like if 
fuel taxes and runway taxes and, mm-hmm. and all kinds. Of, so the more you use, you know, if you buy a boat, you pay tax for the boat. You know, so you have to a fuel yacht. The boat, exactly. You pay tax for the boat. Right. The fuel. And so I understand a person that uses mm-hmm. more stuff has to pay more. Because, you know, if they're using the air, if they're using the water, if they're using this and that, they're paying for it in the form of taxes on the equipment they buy and the fuel and the, the things they buy for that. Right. Why do they have to pay more income tax? doesn't mm-hmm. make any sense. Yeah, why should they be punished? Exactly right. Why should they be punished when they're already, like, Rush Limbaugh made uh, $80 million a year. And guess what? All that money that he made... He went to charity. He gave it to St. Vinny's. He gave it to he gave it to he gave it to the Salvation Army. He did he he did a lot of he did a lot of things. He really did. Rush Limbaugh did you know, a lot well, of things. They, they they not only give it in taxes, they mm-hmm. give it in charity. Right. But they also, I believe, have helped people privately. That's right. And I have done the same. Where mm-hmm. you help people privately, you don't have to talk about it, you don't have mm-hmm. to tell anybody what it is, but you give them something to help them out. That's right. You give them some cash, you give them something to help them, you give them a meal. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't care what it is, but right. you give them something to help them out. Right. And if you've done those things, uh, you, you know, the Lord's going to smile down upon us and thank us for that, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I give at my church, I give... I, I get to, I'm not going to start out getting on what I give, but it, right. and the truth of the matter is, if you have some extra money and you, and you, and you give, you know, uh, the, the Christian uh, churches ask for 10%, and if it's good enough for Christ, I think it should be good enough for the government. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right. And uh, so, <laughs> that's my opinion. That's, that's what I believe. Mm-hmm. I'm going to stick to that. There's no sense in, uh, you know, they ought to define fair share. You know, that that's the funny thing. These, these Democrats go around talking about certain things, and mm-hmm. they never define it. Well, well, how much is my fair share? Right. You know, how, ask mm-hmm. a Democrat that next time you talk to one. Mm-hmm. How much is fair share of taxes should I pay per, per year? Is, is there a figure? Right. Percentage? Is it fair share? And that's, 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 let's get a definition for that. There's several things they've been doing lately. Like they've written in legislation that they don't give uh, definitions for. Mm-hmm. And they need to. They need to. They should be required to define these terms. Mm-hmm. If you're not going to define these terms, then how, how, what is, what is a, a, a terrorist, you know? <laughs> I could go on and on. Well, I know, I hear you, but this is <laughs> this is exactly the point, though. He, he mentioned the, he, this is a great point that you said that you know, where how much money do you, isn't enough? How much money do we really do need? With we want to do another stimulus money of one point nine, another one point trillion dollars. This is ridiculous. I don't know exactly what it is, but I've heard some things banter back and forth from mm-hmm. different people. But I've heard that we're reaching $32 trillion. 34, actually. I heard 34. It's the last time I heard 34. <laughs> and so uh, I'm not sure what the GDP is, mm-hmm. but once you reach a certain number based on the GDP, you're in trouble. You're right, gonna get, you're going to have hyperinflation. You know, we already see that the gas prices are going up. You know, they want to blame it on the, the well, bad weather in Texas, which I'm sure did have some effect. But this not that was only for a few days. Right, so they got things. They should have things caught back up by now. And, and uh, the Green New Deal but, is what this is. It's a whole new Green New Deal. Uh, they want. They want they want to close down refineries, and you know they've already cut they already cut down eleven million jobs already at Keystone Pipeline. I heard it. I heard it, uh, and I I don't recall the town they said, but they were talking about this one day on radio about there was a town in California mm. that is now going to 
make it so there are no private rep residences. Right. So if you got a house, you know, you got your nice 2,800 square foot home that you're living in, you and your wife, well, you don't need those extra bedrooms. We're going to bring some people to live with you. Right. Because <laughs> there, there's no reason that you have that much house. Uh, you know, you don't use it. And so we're going to help you use it and we're going to bring some people in to live with you. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, and, you know, this new world order, this, you know, great reset thing that they keep talking about. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of bull crap <laughs> that, they're, uh, that they're talking about doing. You know, I worked hard all my life. I came up from, you know, I was a kid that had virtually nothing. I had mm -hmm. Keep her out when I was a kid so I could buy myself some clothes because my mother and father were divorced and, I, and they couldn't afford to buy me the right. stuff that I wanted. And so I bought records and I bought, you know, clothes and, 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 and this and that, things that I wanted with my money. Right. You know, and I and I started off working in, 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 a, in a restaurant making a dollar thirty five an hour, you know, and did jobs in the summertime for two bucks an hour for people, and, you yeah. know mowed grass and did yeah, you know, so I worked and earned money when I was a kid so I could have some things. Right. And as I became an adult I I you know, I went after things mm -hmm. that I wanted and I worked hard to get them. And I went right. back to school at a certain age and I you know, I worked hard and I I finally landed a, a nice home and and, and, a, and a good place to live, you know, and mm -hmm. I'm happy. But when I see all this stuff going on, <laughs> and like I left, I left the uh, Central Ohio area, and I hear, listen to the radio every day of one of the nicest malls there. Now they're having shootings every other day up there. It seems like, uh, you know, they're they're uh, starting to reach the Chicago level of murders. Yeah. Uh, and you know, uh, quite honestly, I'm glad I left there. Yeah, I grew up in a town that I used to have a lot of pride in because I was in a position where I was building stuff, and I could go around and point at this and that and say, "Look, I helped build this," or I, you know, and and anymore, I have no desire to go back there. Mm -hmm. It's it's scary. When yeah. I go there, I want to carry my my gun with me. Yeah, you know, and I went out and got concealed carry, so I could, you know. And uh, it's scary to be up there. And now it they was, want. Now the Democrats out. want to take your. Now they do, now the Second Amendment. Now here we go again. The Second Amendment. They want to take that away too with everything else. Yeah. Uh, did I say I had a gun? I, yeah. I'm sorry. I sold my gun. <laughs> <laughs> I sold both of them. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. But all seriousness aside, I, you know the, the world we live in is becoming a. Uh, a very violent place, a place where uh, people are, the only thing they think about is their self. Right. I, I, years ago, I went to Miami, Florida, and I'm not meaning to down the town, but I remember the drivers down there that would just drive right through red lights because they, I'm in a hurry. I'm and also in New York I'm, and Los Angeles, they do that now, by the way. They do that now. And then, you know, when I came home, that didn't happen in Columbus, Ohio, right. and uh, and then pretty soon it started getting worse and worse and worse. And I was up there the other day, and not only did he like like the light changed and then drive through, no, the light changed, and then about three seconds later the guy drives through, mm -hmm. and, and you know just looks at everybody like, hey, I'm I'm in a hurry here, you know. <laughs> You got to be kidding me, right? You know, why, uh, people don't care, and if they have that kind of attitudes when they're driving in their car, it's obvious they don't care about anybody but themselves, right? Because they put other people in danger, right? And, and they don't care. They have no desire to worry about what right. you're doing or what what's going on in your life. Mm -hmm. All they worry about is themselves, and if th those people are the same people that probably you know, would think nothing of going in the mall and start shooting people because they couldn't get their french fries or something. Who knows? You know, I, I, it's, I don't know. It's, it's, yeah. it's a crazy world we're living in. The uh, world has gone nuts. Stuff is, 
times like these, mm-hmm. and it got it got to really start wondering if we're living in the end times, which we are. I mean, the end times started when Christ died, but we are living in the end times. Right. How close are we getting to the, the end? breaking point? Yeah, the breaking point of Earth is chaotic. I know with the Iran too, it's Syria. I mean, think about it. not just. I mean, this deal is just not about. It's not just America. But also, uh, the stimulus money that went to our enemies, not to our allies. The stimulus money that we got, the first stimulus money, and they realized the damage that they caused. They, they should have known that in the first place. Right. Well, we hope, you know, I, you can see a, a president that we have uh, in, in serious mental decline. And um, we know that the, uh, the vice president, and the speaker are very uh, radical in their thoughts. Right. And uh, I predicted that the guy wouldn't last past the inauguration. Well, obviously, I was wrong with that. But I think he's just what they might term as a useful idiot at this point. He can sign the thing. They don't have to take any responsibility for it. Right. They're using him as a, as a ploy. And they're like, well, Joe Biden signed that. You know, Joe Biden did this, Joe Biden did that. Right, and the interest rate's going up, by the way. The interest rate's going up. I mean, to see the stock market is take, taking a hit right now. Oh, it's taking a dive, and they're yeah. going to continue to do that. Um, yeah. It's, uh, it's disturbing. Yeah. It's definitely disturbing what's going we on. We had the best economy during the President Donald Trump. You know, we had the best economy, we had a border security. We didn't have a crisis. Oh, and they think it's not a crisis. It's a challenge. challenge. They call it a challenge, not a crisis. It's a challenge. Uh, yeah, the border challenge. Yeah, it's a border challenge. You know, <laughs> Donald Trump took over a lot of... Uh, he had them. He had he had a... Stuff. Well, he took over a lot of stuff from the Obama administration. Right, well, he, he had a mess is what he did. policy and the... And the, and the Mm-hmm. migrant policy or whatever right. you want to call it and they, how they talked about that Trump was putting people in cages well it was the cages that uh, that uh, the Obama administration built and put into right. place and then now we got bunkers uh, now we got above bunkers now I mean come on you really holding a holding container really really right right so it went from cages to holding containers yeah well they're problem at the border, the crisis that's going on down there, right. the humanitarian crisis where they're basically inviting people who are paying uh, coyotes, you know, four or $5,000 and $3,000 or even if it's $500, whatever it is, right. to get into the country to, and they stuff them in all kinds of situations and put the children and, mm-hmm. and women and, and probably men as well mm-hmm. into situations that are dangerous for them and, and uh, could endanger their life and I'm sure that there's there is a loss of life and there's sexual uh, you know predators that are out there taking advantage of the little girls pedophiles and, yeah they're pedophiles um, you know it's uh, it's it's a crisis it's yeah. a crisis and it's been caused by uh, administration that said, "Look, we're going to open up the borders and invite these people to come to our country," and uh, and so they're encouraging them to come. The, you know, the uh, Trump administration encouraged them to stay in their own country, make their their country better. You know, and they were working with Mexico, and I got to believe that Mexico. Uh, I don't know this to be fact, but I got to believe Mexico's mm-hmm. upset with the, the current administration because you got all these people wandering through their country. Right. <laughs> you know? And it's like, and, and you got uh, uh, organized crime has to be uh, happy about that in Mexico because they're probably taking advantage of all these people and taking any money they have from them, extorting them, using them for sex trade, doing all kinds of stuff. And, uh, you know, that, that doesn't look good on the Mexican uh, government. And uh, it, it's got to be making them mad right. that, that this is happening and it's due to the Biden or the administration. So, you know, <laughs> I don't like what's going on. Yeah. I, I don't believe there's 
much we can do about it. The Republicans, you know, they, they didn't vote for the stimulus package that was stimulating uh, everything around the world except for America. <laughs> very, very little money actually went to, to America. And I, I said, they, I think they said 9% of that money in that uh, $1.9 trillion dollar bill went toward COVID. Right, nine percent of it. Only nine percent of it. You're correct. 9%. That's nine nine percent. You're right. Um, so you got nine percent of the money. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, wow, well, one point nine trillion dollars. So where did ninety point or ninety one percent of the money go? I can tell you. It went to blue states to do bailouts. It went to also the humanitarian of these people coming, the legal immigrants coming across this country. Also went for the crates the, or the or the, the 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 containers, the storage containers for the little children, and then then Como, Andrew Como, did you know Andrew Como gets two point three million dollars of this money? Yeah. It's insane. Uh, Andrew, and I want to tell you about. I, I want to tell you this really fast before we got before before we before before we're done here, Andrew Como. As you know, he worked for the, um, the, 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 was the Clinton administration, 1992. Since 1992 to 1999, how many times did he have a surgical relationship with women during those times? A lot. A lot. Think about this. And then he became the, in 2004, what did Andrew Cuomo do? He became the lieutenant governor the lieutenant or the attorney general of of New York, by the way, and how many sexual relationships did he have up there? Too many. Again, too many, right? Would you agree with that? Too many? Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know, but I know that there were seven women brave enough to come out and, and, uh, and uh, you know. Well, think about, th think about this. Think about this. Then, 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 he had done to okay, and then after 2000, like I said, in 2004, 2007, during those times of being being a, a, during the attorney general, and then 2009 or no 2008 when Obama came in, he was part of the uh, Obama regime administration. Remember, he was part of that. How many sexual encounters did he have with that? Again, too many. And then what happened in 2012, 2016, 2014, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021? He became governor of New York. It's amazing how many uh, people that have really tricky reputations can get into government. I can tell you, I, I can and tell I, you this. I, I just, it's just it's a shame. Right? I can tell you this, Shameful. Bobby. It's fifty women and and and, and ten men. Really? I can tell you that. Fifty women. And yeah, and these women were in all of them were in their twenties. Okay, they were above legal eighteen. Oh yeah, yeah. Be smarter than to to go after the young ones, probably. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's a shame. It's just it's a rotten shame. Yeah, it is. That that people like that can uh, be a part of our government. Right. And get away with the things they've gotten away with. Yep. But anyway, I appreciate your time, though, Bobby. Thank you so much. Anything, anything you want to add before we let you go? Go ahead. Well, <laughs> I have a new song that's coming out here shortly uh, and uh, that I've produced and, and, and made. It's called uh, Drowning in My Tears. And we have some really good, talented people that have uh, been a part of uh, the production of it. Mm. And uh, it should be coming out soon. Um, I don't know exactly when we're actually going to release it to the public, but mm. it's, it's going to come really soon. And they can look for it under Vasid, V A S I D, mm. Vasid Band uh, on YouTube. We're going to try to make a video for it as well. Cool. But I, I am going to try to release it out uh, so we can get start uh, get it played on iTunes and I, I, I heart radio and in those kind of places. Also, I have a question for you. What about this project you're working on, too? You got something going on this week, don't you? You got something going on this week, right? I got something going on this week. 
Don't you have something going uh, on with the church program you have? Oh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For, yeah. That, on uh, Facebook Live on uh, the 20th, uh, which is what, mm-hmm. Saturday at mm-hmm. 5 o'clock. What? We're going to do, we're, we're doing a, kind of a Christian music and cool. kind of theme uh, Christian music that we're going to be playing, Kim uh, Chandler and I. And so if, if you look up Bobby Hartman on Facebook, mm-hmm. Uh, we'll be going live 5 o'clock on the 20th of March and do about an hour's worth of music. And we hope that uh, the message is taken home and and, and uh, people get a good good message you know, that God is trying to send us about Easter and, uh, and the sacrifices that Jesus Christ made. Oh, that's nice. I like God. that. Oh, well, I like that a lot because this needs to be out there. It should be out there. People should find, you know, some kind of, uh, you know, some kind of comfort in this situation that we're in right now. This chaos situation with open borders. They need some kind of um, place where they can find some uh, enjoyment out of life. Well, Mark, I, you know, when I get frustrated, I I go and yeah. I. I, you know, I either read my Bible or I sing mm. some Christian songs, and it actually brings me back mm. and makes me understand that, you know what, no matter who thinks they're in control, the Lord's in control. Yeah. And uh, he's brought many blessings upon my life, and uh, he will bless yours if you... This network, this network is just a blessing from God. It really, truly is. It's not a gift from God. It's a blessing from God. It really, truly is. This is dead. I am not a talent loan from God. This is a truly a gift from God. It really, truly is. Oh, yeah. I get that I'm very much so. Yeah. I understand it totally. <laughs> yeah. This is really, this is All right. great. All right. Thank you so much. We'll talk with you soon. Thank you so much, and we'll see you again in the future. It sounds great. Thank you so much. Yep. Keep me posted what's yep. going on, though. Keep me posted of your of your new projects, and l- let me know anything else uh, you want to talk about. Let us know. So we're, we're here anytime. Thank you, Mark. Have a great day. You think it, you. we are looking out for America. We're not looking out for you. We are, in fact, looking out for America. All lives matter, and we really do care. Amen. Amen to you. Thank you so much. You take care now. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.